it was a Monday, a hot July day, and for some reason, a day that I felt a great foreboding, and, and I don't know why. The sky lit up, and it's just like the sun rose. Everything was bright. You can see all the buildings for a second. Port Chicago came into existence uh, in the aftermath of the attack on Pearl Harbor and the realization that the United States was going to be going to war against Japan and had to rev up for that. They needed now a major ammunition facility. And at that time, the practice was to use black sailors for jobs like ammunition loading, unloading ships. Blacks were not really at welcomed into combat. These were men who thought that they were being trained to go off and fight a war. However, they were very uh, proud that they were able to support the war. The Jim Crow laws were laws that basically separated the races in the South. The entire society was racially divided between blacks and whites. Port Chicago was exactly like that. The barracks for the black sailors were segregated. The work was segregated. One group would load for eight hours and then it'd be replaced by another group. And they worked around the clock, around the clock. The officers with, uh, came up with this idea of encouraging competition between the work groups to get higher output. Which if you stop even for just a second and think about that, that's an insane idea. They would actually bet one another and, and compete from one shift to another, which was not a safe thing to do. July 17, 1944, began as a day like any other at the base. As the ships were being loaded uh, late in the evening, something went wrong. A first smaller explosion that seemed to occur on the ship itself, and then the big one, as all the bombs in the ship went off, like one big bomb. There were 320 men who died in that explosion. There were about 400 who were injured. And it was the worst home front disaster during all of World War II. The next day when you look at photographs, you realize that the pier was gone. The Quinault Victory, which had just arrived, they could see the stern of the ship turned over. What was left was sticking up out of the water. I had an uncle who served at Port Chicago. He was sitting in a chair next to his bunk. He said he was thrown against the wall, a wall of windows. The windows shattered. He said they worked for three days cleaning up. He said he'd find a, a hand in a glove and a foot in a shoe and how horrible it was. He said, but they didn't stop. He said they didn't go to sleep. The third day after he finally got a chance to lay down, he discovered he had glass in his back, but he didn't know it all that time. The uh, bodies which were su sufficiently intact to be identified, some of them are in Golden Gate Cemetery. The handful of seal that's buried up there are all, all that were found. It was the survivors of this terrible tragedy who now found themselves without any explanations of what would be done about it to keep it from happening again. When they were marching one day, they knew that if they went in one direction, they'd be going to ships to load them. They knew if they went in another direction, they wouldn't be. 
At that point, their, uh, their commanding officer gave the order, column left. And everybody stopped. They didn't move. And it was actually a work stoppage, but it was considered mutiny. That was the substance of the so-called mutiny. So some of them went back to work, but there were 50 of them that stood strong. You need to teach us what to do and how to do it. This is gonna blow up again. Was there any violence? Were there any threats against the officers? No. Were the officers at any time in danger? No. Did the men have weapons? No. In other words, when we think of mutiny, and when we think of the violent overthrow of the officers of a ship or of a base, and the takeover of that ship or that base by these angry sailors, that is not what happened at Port Chicago. Well, there was a, a mutiny trial, the largest mutiny trial in the United States, um, and they uh, were found guilty. They were convicted of mutiny. The court consisted of senior naval officers who were the judge and the jury. Thurgood Marshall was a lawyer for the NAACP at the time. He uh, represented civil rights issues and was a hero for the whole African-American community. Marshall came out and, and went to the trial for several days and he basically said this, this trial is a sham. This is about railroading these sailors and making them responsible for what happened at that base. One of the sailors was pardoned by Bill Clinton. But a pardon is not what we're looking for. A pardon says, you did something wrong, but we're gonna forgive you for it. We would like to have an exoneration of the men so that they know that, you know, that wherever they are, <laughs> that uh, they're okay and that their names will be cleared. These sailors paid a very high price for an act of resistance, which itself was totally nonviolent. And that became, I think, an inspiration for the Civil Rights Movement, too. There's a little monument out there now that the National Park Service put, put up in which the names of all the men who died are listed. And for the moment, that's what we have to be satisfied with. So our job is for people to know about the story, try to correct some of the misstatements and misperceptions about the story, and to honor the men who died there and who served there. The story will not be forgotten.